Good day, ladies and gents. I'm Emilio A. Colon Sr. This is the EC Show coming to you from sunny South Florida. As always, wait, this isn't as always. This is the Jewish dreidel, Jake Feingold. He's joining me in the building today. EJ is to my right. As you can see, this is a full Jeremy Torres production who's up in the booth with the boy 12. Uh, we got Jordan Crate from Jordan Crate Photography, and we got Jordan 2.0 that's in the building as well. This show is fully sponsored by KD Power Greens, our urban farm microgreens company that I own with my kids. Guys, make sure you visit kdpowergreens.com for all of your microgreens. The episode is powered by Ignite Social. Ashley Oliver, thank you for everything that you've been doing for us from a social media standpoint. And just a friendly reminder, make sure you go to inasiacologne.com for all of your EC Respect merch. E-N-A-S-I-A-C-O-L-O-N.com. Guys, welcome back. We had a break on July 4th. Joe's not on the show because he's still flying in from the Hamptons. He literally was landing maybe about 20, 30 minutes before we started the show, so he wasn't going to be able to make it. So, But, Jake, you spent some time with us for 4th of July. We had a great time. EJ was there. He cooked up some hamburgers. Shout out to Dookie Dave and his family. They made the steaks. It was we amazing. Dookie, and I want to say thank you to Joe because um, him and his dad, they're the ones that actually allowed us the opportunity to enjoy their penthouse out on Lauderdale by the sea. It was a great time. Oh, it was amazing. It was, it was beautiful. beautiful. It was nice. I got baked like a fucking tomato. Me too. Tell a funny story I mean, about I'm that. I'm always so baked. we get two fobs and we get two keys for the house and for the pool and for the baked. beach or whatever it may be. And Dookie's not there yet because I, I got to make sure he gets a fob for his family so yeah, him and his family can be all right. Yeah. But Dookie's not there. So it's just basically just me, you, Inasia, Wendy, and Jake. Jake was at the pool. I don't fucking know how both fobs ended up upstairs all the way fucking 17 flights up in the penthouse. I'll and I was what. stuck on the fucking beach the whole time. I'll tell mm -hmm. you how both fobs ended up upstairs. It's just because Ine took one thinking mom didn't have one. And mom took one thinking Ine didn't have one. So they both went upstairs, with both of them. And then when I was like, oh, Jake's downstairs, come get me. They came downstairs. Jake was at the pool. I went upstairs and I was like, wait, where's dad? He's like, at the beach. I'm like, that guy's going to die. We're going to see him with, like, a sun, like, Lack burn. of communication. Well, of I did have a strategy, because the way I'm, like, dark in my face is mm -hmm. how I should be dark all over, because I do the 20 minutes, 20 minutes, like, I rotate. Mm -hmm. For Shit some reason, work. I don't know, unbeknownst to me, the fucking sun must have just decided, oh, we're going to fuck with you on other areas. I was, you... Tell it. I was red as shit. Like a lobster. Like a lobster in certain areas, and I'm just like, yo, how did this happen? Because on the rest of my body, I'm not, like, but I was just baked. Big, big, big. I put aloe. I put some other shit. Obviously, today is the first day I'm actually peeling, so it's actually showing what happened. But I just didn't understand it because it's something I do all the time. Appreciate you bringing the football. Of course. I gave him a few slaps. I gave him a few slaps on the shoulder. So oh, he's you're a, a fucking fun. dick. Them shits he's hurt too, fun. you fucking asshole. No, we, actually, we actually played pickleball on Saturday. Uh, speaking of the heat and how hot it was, we played pickleball on Saturday, and I almost dropped dead. Uh, we played one on one just a little bit, me and Jordan. 2.0? And, uh, wait, 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 who won? Uh, he won two out of three. Wow! 14, 12, 7, 2, 7, 4. Really? Oh, that's, that's, you know. I thought you, I thought you, when you said that in He's the group good. chat, I he, thought you said that you were playing with other, like against other people. Bro, Jordan too. Well, we went good, to Terramar hoping to play with other people. I know, you know what happened? We I were read, the only I ones read there. The, you know what happened? I read the text message wrong. That's what happened, 2.0. Because what I thought what he was saying is I thought he was saying he's playing pickleball against a person that was like of that rank. I didn't I didn't read the text message properly to to to, to say that you were playing against 2.0. Oh yeah, I mean we were gonna try to run it together, but we got there. We were the only two people, so we just Yo, ran it by ourselves. Speaking of pickleball, bro, are, are you talking no. in the mic? Make sure you're talking in we're the, the mic. We're the only ones. We can't hear you if you're not talking in the mic. Yo, the only ones. Making like sure two in the afternoon. Yo, Make sure you're talking in the mic. Especially with pickleball at Terramar. For the past two days, Ine's been going running, and I go run a little bit, and then I get I go to pickleball. Yeah. Bro, it's 95 degrees outside at like nine in the morning. I'm playing like six games with these old people, and don't get me wrong. They're good, so I'm out here getting balls that are like lobbed over my head nine times in a game. Mm -hmm. And then my teammate had the audacity to go, "You okay? No, you're standing there, and I'm running for this ball back here. So then, you want me to do it?" So anything? I misunderstood the text message. So when you were playing one on one, you were playing 2.0. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I thought 2.0. I thought that he was playing a person that was of that level, like yeah, meaning hey. like 2.0 was like a fucking oh, like you know nah, what I'm saying? No, nah, no, nah, nah, I misunderstood because I thought you guys were playing together against somebody. That, that was... Right. Hey, 2.0 yeah, yeah, yeah. is on a different level, man. I mean, he has his moments, really dude. With 101, I, I, the only person that I could confidently say could probably beat me would be Brad at 101. Anyone 
Oh, that boy feeling himself, huh? I mean, he's just fast. <laughs> if you put the yeah, bro, he, he is play, fast. He's like he half the court. I mean, yeah, the if, whole court, it, it's a wrap. if you put the ball in the right spot, you beat him. But if if you're gonna try to hit the ball past him in one on one, it's you're not gonna get a pass. And then him. he developed his backhand and got better. So the view, the view at Lauderdale by the Sea was straight phenomenal. Uh, we really did luck out because at first we thought they actually had the tugboat with the fireworks that was coming right to where we were at. So we didn't even have to like budge off the balcony. We were going to be able to see everything. And I guess the tugboat either decided to take a U-turn and go back because maybe it went over or that's just the route it needed to go in order to do it during the light and then eventually go back to its destination. So it took off a little bit further than we liked, but we were still able to see all the fireworks there, from the balcony. There were a lot of people that complained about Lauderdale by the Seas uh, fireworks show. What did they say? Uh, just my mom that my mom knows a lot of people that live in that area, and, and they were saying, like, it wasn't the best show. Uh, it could have been better. No. Could Here's have been the thing. Longer. You guys were at the balcony, and I was on the roof. And I was watching Fort Lauderdale, and you guys were watching the boat. Like, I had the best view, I think, out of all you guys. Yeah, I just didn't want to get off the balcony. The balcony was dope. Yeah, yeah. because you liked the breeze that was hitting you from your sunburn. So you guys got to enjoy the Wednesday night, Thursday, and Saturday. I stayed Wednesday night, stayed with you guys Thursday, and then Saturday morning I had to go back to work. So you guys really, really got a chance to soak it all up. Well, in. here's really the thing. We were going to leave with you on Saturday, but obviously, as the good people we are, the towels no, Friday, we used. Friday, Friday, Friday. Friday. We, as the good people we are, we wanted to use, we used the towels and we wanted to wash them and leave them back. But the dryer took so long to dry the towels. So we were there until 10, 10 p.m. And we were like, we don't want to sleep. We want to go home. Yeah. So we just drove home instead of staying there. Got to enjoy a little bit of wrestling. Uh, yeah. There's been some WWE money in the bank situations that just went on not too long ago. Uh, Jake, I have to blame you for everything that's going on with wrestling with me because I was completely dormant. Jordan 2.0, EJ will tell you it's not something that I used to watch at all. MJF and highlights And this guy night. comes along and he starts speaking wrestling into me and just this basic conversation. And sometimes even in the group chat between me, him, and, 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 and Joe, I, I kind of like text him on the side and I'm like, yo, just text me on the side with this wrestling stuff. Because Joe's not, you know, he's not into it. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like. Fuck it. Joe puts like 14 text messages about bullshit in there. I could put my that, one. Yeah, talk about it. Again. I, I could put my one wrestling yeah, name yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah, he just put 14, 14 messages about his plugs, <laughs> you know, so I'm going to put no, my Roman. Me, he goes, Yo, we're getting blasted with 15 messages about the plugs he's meeting in Bro, this, Long Island. This guy started fucking spewing every plug that he's met in New York. I'm like, Jesus Christ, Born, what'd you do? Hey, it's nothing. It's, hey, shit, if he could give me a water plug, I'm down. Fuck <laughs> Avion. I'll put fucking respect water, EC water in this motherfucker all day long. Shit. Tri tri the Triple H made his first uh, creative mistake what as, as CCO. So tell, tell, tell it. Triple H allowed McIntyre to win money in the bank and lose it in the same night. And the peak of that story had already happened mm -hmm. with CM Punk screwing mm -hmm. McIntyre. Mm -hmm. So there's no point in having him win and losing it in that night. Could have given it to another superstar and had that person uh, make their way. But, yeah, he made a mistake. Speaking of wrestling, I'm not, I've never watched more Mr. Perfect highlights than I've watched with this guy in the past. Okay, so here's the thing, and, EJ, and EJ, EJ needs to understand this, because EJ, he thinks I have, like, this major, major infatuation with MJF. I don't have this major, major infatuation yo, with him. I just really yo. applaud, I just really applaud how he is, quote-unquote, the total package where he can wrestle, he can cut a promo, and he plays the fucking audience like there's no tomorrow. He can get the audience to say shit that he wants them to say. To then play on the next thing he is trying to do. That is that, that is, is talent. That is amazing. Went but you playing it nine times. No, I saw it. Yeah, yeah, I saw amazing. it. Huh? You playing it nine times. No, but I only play it that much to like <laughs> to catch like certain things. You know, I didn't come up with introducing him as in Jacob Maxwell Friedman on my own. Like I can't. I won't take credit for that. You know. So what I'm when when MJF signed with AEW, mm -hmm. he rewatched that video of him taking down and like him going like, I'm not leaving. Like at least 20 no, times in one night. And Jake 20 tell you, times. Jake watches it exclusively, and so does 2.0. 2.0, you can chime in on this if you want. There are certain little details that you can see in certain things that they do. They're either mistakes or they're little cues or whatever it may be. Like, for example, that just has happened this past weekend. That guy was supposed to kick. Was his name Damian Priest? Yeah. He was supposed oh, to kick out. Oh, my God, that was so there bad. There was a wrestling match between him and Seth Rollins, and he gets fucking suplexed or whatever it is. And the referee counts one, two, and the referee's about to go down for the third one, but he's not supposed to count three. 
And the referee just says two, but the fucking guy never kicks out. He was out of it. Guy's he, just he, sitting there with his leg like limp up in the air. He was out of it. Like, oh, he was, he was out of it for a good minute, right? 100%. Oh, it ruined, it ruined McIntyre coming out. Yeah. Because when he came out and the entrance came on, everyone was so completely He didn't even know who he needed no, to fight. No, yeah, nobody knew. He didn't even know who he needed to fight. He thought he needed to fight Seth. And in all actuality, he needed to fight Damien. Was his name Damien Priest? He even asked He even asked who he's supposed to pin. Like I would have pinned both of them. Well, and they kind of cleared it up. I think uh, Irvin went on the mic and said it's now a triple threat match. So that told me that he missed the kick out. Yeah. Because if it was, it did get interesting because you didn't know if it was a triple threat or who just won that match. And, and that's Gorilla saving the whole show by just screaming in the microphone to the commentator and telling the commentator no, what to course. say. of course. Like, we got Voice of God up there. Shout out to Jeremy up in the booth. We got the Voice of God up there. You know, that, that's how it goes. When something goes wrong, you have to kind of, like, improvise, especially when doing I don't think they production. improvised at all. I think if he just, what, what, what should have happened was Priest would on the two count kicked out, fans would have went, oh, because that, I, I thought Seth would have won there. And then all of a sudden it would have been Drew and then they went, oh. Hindsight 2020, hindsight 2020. Yeah. The easiest thing, let Seth win it. Fucking let fucking McIntyre come out. Fucking money in the bank to shit and fucking let Seth win it and drop the title to fucking whoever you want to drop the yeah. title to on the next event or whatever it may be. I think they have longer term plans for Seth and that's why that couldn't happen. That's they have it. to have a long-term So investment. I got to give a shout-out to them because they do an actual amazing job of engaging an audience. How long was that shit? Three hours? Yeah. Three hours for five fucking matches. Like, yeah. it's crazy. Like, you would think that you're getting more wrestling or more promos than that. It was literally five matches. And that's it. There's enough entertainment going on in between to keep you in your seat that's for all crazy. three hours. Here's, this matches. is something I want to say, though. I... Love, when I was a kid, I, I watched WWE, right? I've been watching AEW highlights. Mm -hmm. I like the way AEW wrestles more than I like WWE. WWE is a, uh, like, story. They yeah, I love, I, yeah. Love, I love the fact that in AEW, someone's cutting someone off the top rope and bringing it yeah, down. Like, yeah. I love that. AEW is more focused on, you know, the, the wrestling. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're more focused on the wrestling. They, and they, they promote that more than anything else. I want to give a round of applause. Can we give a round of applause to the ladies that actually fought that match? Uh, I was a big fan of Chelsea Green and also of the Oriental Lady. Oh my God, she she killed it. I'm I'm a big fan. Uh, Chelsea Green actually was on a ladder. She's a stunt it's, woman for it's those guys. It's tea time though. Yeah, it's definitely tea time. But it's, it's she's a tea stunt, time. She's a stunt woman, and she literally was on top of a ladder. She plays this excellent character that she makes it look like she's afraid of heights. It's such bullshit, but. She was up or stuck on a on a fucking ladder and she literally got tilted off and fell into a fucking table. That shit was absolute. Even my wife was like, "Whoa!" Like that shit was great. Because it's Crazy. it's it's also very important to realize that these people are pulling off acts that they can actually hurt themselves and they make sure that they're For not sure. hurting. Themselves. That's what I learned. Because you, you remember sometimes I'd be like, "Oh, wrestling's fake." The the script is fake. Even the sometimes the wrestling's fake. Like he'll like you have him on top rope and be like, "Oh, I'm about to do this this." But the actual pain, you can't, no, you can't fake pain. You can't tell a wrestler what they do is fake. You can say that the outcome is scripted and they have no problem agreeing yeah. with you with that. But telling a wrestler that it's fake, they, they'll fucking flip out because they know actuality of all the work they put in. You know how many, you know how many hours they spend on the road? It's way too many hours. Like, like, I remember when I first brought up that wrestling was fake, Dad put on a match and, like, a guy got hit hard in the head with the chair. And he's like, is that fake? I'm like... No, but you know who's going to win this match, don't no, you? No, but that's yeah. different. See, so if you word it the right way, then everybody will agree with you. No one will disagree with you. If you say, Dad, they already know who's going to win. The outcome is scripted. Yeah, of course. But everything else that you do inside of that, Yeah, no, the, you, you can't not. fake pain. You can't do that. There was, what I'm, was it? It was Randy Orton that was trying to do some, like, hyping up the crowd shit, and he accidentally pulled his shoulder. No, that's fucking real, homie. His shoulder's out of socket. There's no, there's no faking that. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? For sure. What were you going to say now? Uh, I was just going to say some of the equipment might be like fake, but, you know, for the most part, you know, they, they do fly through the tables and they fly through, you know, whatnot. I wanted to, another, they, they might be cracked already. They might be pre-cracked. Another thing we brought up before the show, before you told me to leave it for the show, was Jake's an L.A. fitness hooper. Um, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. So, a, so around a, this area here in Coral Springs, He looks like Dante area, DiVincenzo. A L.A. fitness that is close to us closed down and it's now becoming a crunch, so... Jake is forced to go to a crunch that's a little bit further away. 
And we were joking about how when Jake went to L.A., we were asking him if he was an L.A. fitness hooper. And he said, no, no, that's like the G League over there, <laughs> yeah, right? No, those guys are good, bro. I can't compete. I don't compete with hey, them. Hey, just sit in a corner. Bro they, got those seven, on defense. bro, they got the 70-year-old old men, bro, and those guys can shoot. They don't no, miss. No, and then they have, they, the, don't miss. They, they have the college kids that come in to get, like, their warm-up games. Oh, yeah. And they start yeah, dunking yeah. in. Yeah, but yeah, me, it's a little bit too serious for me. Like, you know, and, and I think I've told the story once before, but I'll tell it again. I've been retired from playing basketball for a very long time because I was at a park and we were just, we were getting annihilated. My team was getting killed. And some, like, at the time I'm like 25 and some like 30 something year old guy was guarding me. And I was the only one scoring on my team. So he wanted to switch. Some other guy wanted to switch and guard me so he could shut me down. And I went to the hole, I made a layup. I went to the hole again, tried to make a layup and he hit my hand so hard that my thumb popped into the oh, middle of my hand. Damn. And I didn't get to work for 10 days, so it wasn't like it wasn't even worth it anymore at that point. So I realized real quick, I'm like, man, this shit ain't fucking worth it. What the fuck am I doing? And since that day, I've been like retired. He uns retires to like beat me in basketball or when I was younger, but like he's retired. It's just now. more about being smart about what you do. You can't rest sure. so you hurt yourself because then the next thing you know, you're out of commission. If you're out of commission, it affects a lot of individuals. Everything like, for else. example, if I hurt myself here, right? You guys can continue doing the show, but I can't continue doing what I fucking do. So it's like, okay, you know what I'm saying? There's certain things that are going to be able to, you know, go on or whatever it may be, but me being involved is going to be limited because of my ability to do things. I've seen his old basketball clips. I've seen his old shooting, his old half-court shots. Is it nice? They were nice. Really? Nice. Really? I've seen his old clips. Like Jalen Brunson. Better than Jalen Brunson. I could play, man. I could play. I I could play. It was um, was just the knees, man. I could play. It's It's just more about, you know, about picking your spots and being smart about certain things, you know? That's why sometimes I hear stories or I hear people talking. I, I just laugh because I don't have anything to Yo, play. his my player would look fire. Yo, his my player Dude, would be crazy. My, my player. player. The, like NBA 2K, my player. Oh, Yo, like, yeah. your gray beard. Uh, we would beard. have the beard all the way down. And we have to make 99, a junkie. 99 shot, bro. It would be amazing. 99 shot with like 30 speed. <laughs> all right, so this happened, and we have to bring this up. And if you guys don't feel like, you know, you want to talk about it, that's fine, but... Um, I know how you guys feel about the NBA, um, but what happened this past week with the atrocity of LeBron James Jr. being fucking drafted in the second round oh my God. and getting a $7 million contract is absolutely absurd. This strikes a chord for me. It's absolutely absurd. LeBron said today that Bronny deserves a spot on the NBA US it, uh, on the Team USA roster. I don't know. If wait, it was wait, real. the Team USA roster. I don't know the if Lakers it was. Re- yeah, no, the okay, Team USA. Okay. I don't know if it was real. It was probably like yeah, AI generated. It's tough. it's tough with the AI generation era but, nowadays. But here's the thing: Cooper Flag, who hasn't played a college game yet, is killing that it. That kid can ball. That kid can play. That's there's a difference between Cooper him and Bronny Flag James. Cooper played a single let's, college let's, game. Let's, He's let's on the USA selection. Let's get back to the subject before we give Cooper Flag his flowers. It bothers me, and I'll explain why it bothers me. It bothers me because it kind of like insinuates or dictates a narrative that you don't have to put in the work. You don't have to bust your ass. You don't have to fucking go to the NCAA and and cook people in the NCAA tournament or in your regular season or when you're waking up at 7 or 8 a.m. and you're putting in that work. But you can't take that away from him now. You just have to be a rich fucking person's fucking dad with a famous last name. And then the next thing you know, you can have no accolades whatsoever that anoint you to be able to be in a fucking company amongst these individuals. But you can't take that away from him. He did go to the NBA combine thing and do what he had to do. But yes, that the- motherfucker would not be invited to that shit if his last name wasn't James. If he gave him time. Yes or no? You're right. You're no, right. You're am right. I, am you're I saying right. anything wrong? You're Please, right. if anybody feels like saying anything about this subject, by all means, you have an open Yo, what I don't, what I don't dislike is the Philadelphia 76ers is what I dislike. No, is don't the change Philly- the subject. No, no, no. This is about the same subject. People thought the 76ers guy that they took was trash just because he does TikTok and worry about other things. But that guy averaged 20 points in college. And he actually made it instead of Bronny. They're like, oh my God, Bronny is the next. Gonna How be- do you give him seven million dollars guaranteed? His father's Malcolm X. Shit. He's That's why. Yeah. The I fucking arena. Say, Yo, I the arena. I got LeBron James kid on my team. Listen to me. The, the arena. The arena fits nineteen thousand, no matter what. It can't fit no more. It's not like Messi's coming in that motherfucker, and you got to play fucking in soccer. But here's the thing: it doesn't always thing. fill out nineteen thousand people. Listen, you're gonna me, get every single seat filled. Hey, this, I'm not saying it's gonna last all season. Because if he, you know, say shoot, what? If he shits the bed, they're gonna stop fixing tickets. It. All I can say is, if Jerry Buss was still alive, 
he would yeah. never, Sh- ever, ever Shame on the Lakers. Allow Shame this on to the Lakers. Bro, the Lakers, be... the Lakers only drafted Bronny so they can confirm that. Shame. Shame. Back. Genie Bus is running an absolute circus. Circus. A circus. So it's Walt Disney Jerry 2.0. Jerry Buss would never allow this to happen. Never in his life. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, it has nothing to do with the kid itself. I don't know the kid from a hole in the wall. I'm just talking about the actual process of it. It's not warranted. It's not. The reality of it is, is LeBron fucked them with their contract. Yeah. And so if LeBron decided to walk and take a new team, they would have been fucked in contract. Did contracts. you see the contract LeBron took? And so, Two year, $104 million. So in order, in order, in order to take, in order to take the contract that was in front of him and stay with the Lakers and not put them in financial stress for the next 10 years. This guy signed a two year and told them, you must draft my son. You must draft my son. And it's fucked up, but That's hey. That's crazy. That's, I mean, I, I'm not gonna lie. I have been watching a little bit. I don't know if you guys have. I've been watching a little bit of the Euro basketball. Euro yeah. basketball is different because Giannis has to play with five motherfuckers that look like they work at fucking Hellenic Republic Greek place right here on university. You know what I'm saying? Because that's just the reality of it. You got to go ball. Here's the thing. And if USC fucking, doesn't win, that's crazy. And then fucking Dantic has to play with a bunch of motherfuckers from Slovenia and shit. That Jokic has I to always, play with a whole bunch of Serbian drunks. I always have a lot to say about ESPN analysts and how stupid they are and how they all just get uh, positioned because of some former job that they've had that shows no experience in commentating whatsoever, but they get these positions. Um one ESPN analyst right after this whole LeBron James thing compared it to the Jerry Jones situation in Dallas where Jerry owns the team, his son's the VP, his daughter's No, the, that's completely this. fucking that's, different. No, and, no, uh, no. That's completely it, it, it different. Just made me Jerry think Jones how and stupid. his family owns it. Yeah, LeBron it and just, his family plays I agree. Him. It just made me think how stupid these ESPN analysts are that but uh, ESPN ride LeBron. analysts put out anything they want so they can gain the attraction, and then it goes down, and they put out more I mean, it's BS. Just, it's just Disney-backed, the whole thing. It's the Disney Lake, the Lakers, ESPN. The I, didn't, I didn't want to go into that route because I didn't want to end up basically turning into what they already do on a fucking daily basis for fucking five hours of Stephen A. Day. Smith and about the Big Perk. Fucking stupid shit. I didn't, I didn't want to do that. I fucking watched fucking... Uh, I was briefly watching fucking Skip talk about the same shit over and over and over again when I was getting my hair cut the other day. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, this is what TV has turned into? Like, this is what TV has turned into? No one can sit there and say anything that's remotely close to being, quote unquote, really opinionated. You have to dictate this based off the audience that you have. Shout out Shannon Sharp, though. Best week, in, in ES- best week uh, of the year for ESPN, for those that watch it, because they have Wimbledon, so all that, fuck, all that bull uh, sports shows, they don't, they don't play it. Right. So I don't got to hear it the whole week. It's Jesus nice. fucking Christ. Shout out Shannon Sharp. My boy Brett Favre suing him again. Shannon Sharp is being sued by Brett Favre for what? Defamation. Defamation for what? What did he what? say? He said Brett Favre is a thief. Brett Favre is a thief. Hey, he don't said. sue me. That's what he said. That's what he said? I don't have money He for said you. Brett Favre is a thief. I mean, not, not quote unquote exactly, but along those lines. He so said Brett some Favre words that meant. We just said Brett Favre is a thief. Does he sue us? No, um, it, was spoke, it was spoken in... A different context. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Um, I think he was it. going in on Brett Favre yeah, and then he brought was. up, like, oh, you Didn't steep. he drop the last lawsuit that he had with McAfee and him? Yeah, I think he had also previously sued Sa- Shannon Sharp and dropped that as well. So he just reopened the case. Jesus Christ, yeah. get over yourself. Can't I think a lawsuit, what, a lawsuit cost like 150 bucks? Yeah. 150 bucks? Is that yeah, all it is? Yeah, I think the filing fee is like 150 you know, or something. It's Brett like Favre. That. It's Brett Favre. He can throw it up here. Guys, You've been guys, hitting me. Guy's stealing welfare money. You think he doesn't have 150 bucks? <laughs> Come on, bro. Be careful, allegedly. <laughs> Listen, um, you've been hitting me lately. Jake's been hitting me lately about Euro picks. And today's the first one I got wrong. Oh, yeah, France, France lost. Bye. Spain. And France lost to Spain 2-1. to one. Damn, I didn't even watch. Yeah, they lost to Spain. What England's going to win the whole thing. England, England's tomorrow? England England's tomorrow. tomorrow. Who do they play? Netherlands? The Netherlands. Yeah. England's winning I went on a thing. run. Ask Jake. Jake, tell you. Jake, it was, uh, what was it? Um, like three in a row. No, it was like no, no, no. four in a row. It was from July. It was from July fourth to like July third. Sa- July third to Saturday. You're talking about the soccer? Yeah, yeah the soccer picks. Just yeah, three or four games. Because we ended up watching. What was it that day? Argentina, Argentina played later that night. No, we watched Argentina was, versus Ecuador. It was Copa that night. Now Copa was July fourth. July third, he texted me for that, and I gave him the two for that, and then I got the Copa one right, and then he texted me the next day for the next games, and I got those right too. But they were obvious games, like. 
you couldn't tell if France was going to beat Spain or Spain was going to be France today. They're both good teams. But I can tell he you, he was tomorrow, almost spot on with the Swiss one. He was like, as much as I want Swiss to win, uh, I think England's going to win. He's, I think, I think he said like England's going to win late or something, and I think ex- that exactly happened. They did. Swiss scored. England scored a goal in like the 82nd minute. And he was texting me. He texted me like the alarms when they scored. I was literally watching it at the gym. I couldn't believe that guy scored from where he scored from. He's good. Saka's good though. Guy just kicked the ball and like I'm, my eyes were like moving with the screen. And, like, he was so fucking far out that, like, I didn't think it had a shot to go in the net. And then you just watch it go Bro, in the my, net. Bro, my eyes follow the ball. It's fucking. Bro, when it comes to soccer, angles be having you deceived. Because I watched the France versus Portugal game, and France won. But there was a chance when Portugal shot the ball, and, like, the camera angle made it look like it was going in the goal. Mm-hmm. And, like, bro, that shit went almost in the Way stands over. behind me. It's crazy. Crazy part about it is I, we need to start doing, like, a pre-recorded show before the show. Because I get on you guys so much because you guys love to chatter. When the sh- right before the show starts. Oh, oh, thank you for reminding me. Hey, 12, I love you, man. You work 30 hours. I love you. <laughs> oh, yeah, shout out to Miss Team Florida you. that was actually Jerry shot YouTube. here this past weekend. Is, th- is that footage air already, or is it somewhere else, or, like, what is it? It was live streamed. It was live streamed. Jeremy, so, 12, I love you. Shout y'all. out to Miss Team Florida. It was actually shot here. Shout out to Linda McMahon. Linda. Linda McMahon, the ex-wife of Mr. Vince McMahon, was here. Is that Apparently correct? he's the GOAT. Is that correct? Yes, Jeremy, the voice of God, says it's correct. He was here. She's a legend uh, in the building. Um, they actually had, the, it's crazy, because the setup, Jeremy showed me a picture in 12, was talking about it earlier. 12 was complaining. They had fucking lights. Like, this was WWE in this motherfucker. And they extended 2.0 in Jordan, the stage, three rows in to, like, have, like, a catwalk. Like, so, a thick catwalk. So, you know how, like, there. the WWE has, like, those big, like, things, like, the, like the panels like of the screen? Spotlight. Oh, yeah, That's yeah. what they had. Yeah, and then so. they had the lines, the lights, and everything. I'm like, for what? The only problem is they came here 18 members down and fucking 12 Malik and fucking... Jeremy had to work their asses off to help them out over I here. I was told that they just, they stayed here for 24 hours, went home, showered, uh, ate food and came back for, and 30 hours of straight work. Dude, they came here with two fucking massive my, trucks. Minus the eat food part. Yeah, minus, minus the eat food, food part. They my came bad. in they with two massive semi trucks. It was like a full, full fledged fucking production. It's crazy. Like $3 million worth of shit. It's crazy. We'll let Jeremy Without show Without a crew to help? Without a crew to help. What the fuck? They had to carry 2,000 pound light towers. It was Six of the road crew and six of my crew. Did they appreciate it? Yeah, they did. Did they pay? Okay. That's a no. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> Yo, look, look at 12. He, had, he said he got no bonus. I mean, he got his bread. They paid me. They got paid me. I didn't. But. <laughs> look at him. He's putting his thumb down. No, you were in the t-shirt, though. <laughs> the t-shirt's fine. <laughs> it was free, you heard? It was free. <laughs> hey, bro, money is money, man. Shirts are shirts, man. You're you can stop it, Jordan. Up. You can stop it. I mean, if they... Hey, if they appreciate it and they pay, yeah. what can you say? No, you can't, can't say you much. can't say anything. No, of course not. What else they got going on later this month, Jeremy, here? Look, he's got to he's look it up. Summer camp. Just the summer camp. Shout out to Next Stop Broadway. We appreciate them. They, uh, they help out a lot when it comes to this stuff here at the Performing Arts Center. That's why we're actually shooting from like a different angle because next stop, oh, the summer camp has like a setup behind us. And they kind of like, we don't want to ruin their stuff, but we still want access to the stage. So they actually call up. Because if we don't do it on stage, then we have to go upstairs. Right. So because, you know, they're nice enough to sit there and say, look, we'll leave this here. We'll just put another drop down down. Mm-hmm. And then we end up shooting the show. The camera ends up being three, what is it? Like three rows, four rows, four rows in than normal, because normally the camera's on stage and everybody else is on stage and we're further back, but because they're behind us. I don't think I ever told you this. Uh, remember when I came here for the show about the comedian guy, Preacher Lawson? Yeah. Um, I actually met him afterwards, and then I went on to, I met, I met him up front. Oh, okay. I met him up front, and I met another guy that was a comedian. He, they were both cool guys. Then I come onto the stage to say bye to Jeremy and 12, right? And then there's the water bottle that he used in the act. And I'm like, bro, you want this? But, but, but Bryce, and he's like, but you know that's the one he touched, right? I'm like. Nigga, if you don't just drink it and just get off the stage. <laughs> like, it's, not like, it's not like God touched the water bottle. You're not going to die. No, like, why don't you tell him about... I know about the story. Why don't you tell him the story about how EJ got checked by security in here? Yo, I got checked, I don't bro. remember. I can't, no, 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 you weren't here. Oh. Yeah. I walked down. I walked down. He's like, nobody allowed this way. I'm like, um, I'm with them. I'm, I'm allowed. He's You're like, with who? You got to tell the I audience. T- I'm, the audience I'm, with, I'm with Malik and I'm with 12, right? <laughs> 
And then they go, he goes, no, 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 you got to get out of here. I'm for, I'm, if you don't come out of here, I'm going to have to force you out of here. I'm like, who is this guy? I go back up. I'm like, Malik, get this guy for me. And the guy's like, oh, my bad, my bad. EJ, EJ, EJ's 15 years old pulling rank at the performing <laughs> arts like, I was like, I was like, I was like, hey, man, watch out. And I was, was like, he, I know him. Was he a big guy? Huge. So he would have moved you? He wouldn't have moved me. I'm going to tell him to toss him next time. <laughs> but it was, the, it was the guy with the glasses. Also, I want to give a shout out to um, very good, nice guy, Andre, though. Andre, oh. and uh, and um, Andrew. Uh, Malik actually wore our respect hoodie in the intermission of the show that they did here. It was kind of crazy. People were asking me about it, but of course they give him the fucking thug job. His job during the intermission was to a black guy destroy doing the, thug job. the whole fucking setup. <laughs> Yeah, see? And he's in a black hoodie with black sweatpants with the black guy. Yeah, and so they had like, him steal the cash. Yeah, they have him steal the cash and ruin everything and this, that, and that, and that's what they decide to put him in. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's hilarious. He strolled on stage like he was acting drunk, one leg paddling, rolled up, missing his <laughs> shoe, looking like a street drunk, literally stumbled in there, threw shit around, and walked and then out his shirt, the register. And then his shirt says respect on it. Yeah. <laughs> that's mad really funny. That's just, How long did it take you to get home that night? A uh, long time. Um, I left at like 9.15, 9.20, and didn't make it home till 10.50 something. Jesus. So basically. Sat on fucking commercial or whatever that road is before you get to commercial, right outside the penthouse mm-hmm. area, for at least an hour. The bridge was still up because of the fireworks. And then so decided that I was going to attempt to beat traffic and made a U-turn about 1.1 miles after I drove about 1.1 miles. It took me about 30 minutes to go 1.1 <laughs> miles. Right? So I, I made a fucking U-turn thinking that I could potentially beat yeah. traffic and go a different way. Well, I don't know directions. I, I literally yeah, don't know left Google. from right. So I'm just hoping that my GPS like resets after I fucking just drive far enough. And it keeps Dude, I'm like fucking, yeah, I'm like three miles down the road and it just keeps saying, make a U-turn, make a U-turn. Make a U-turn. So I'm like, what the fuck? Well, here's the thing. So yo, I made a U-turn, right. yo, I made a U-turn and got back in line and then waited another 45 minutes to make it to the but same But here's spot. the thing, here's the thing. Instead of, you got to go straight, you got to make a U-turn, right? Go straight and then bust a right and then it's going to be Bro, I don't know, I don't know directions. I kind of, I kind of like, kind of told you like, just yo, just sit it out, wait it out here, because it's gonna be fucking bad. Like it's gonna be. Awful. I probably wasn't listening though. Like honestly, like it caught me by total surprise that there was a huge line when I pulled out. Right? Doogie Day, Doogie Day probably went through the same thing. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, he probably did. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Jake left a little later though. He had a little bit more time. Jake yeah. was chilling. Jake was on fucking rest bro, mode. We, bro, we sure. The was, sun was, beat him so bad. He was on airplane mode. Like that, that's, what it, that's what bro, it is, the though. Sun the sun beat him so bad. After he came up from the pool, he took a shower, you know, got all dressed. He got on the couch, and he, he was that, like, oh, this that, is kind of nice. And that's like, what it is, though, the sun. Anytime I spend that long in the sun, like. Bro, I saw his eyes roll back. Long. Bro, it's an hour, and I'm what good. What do you mean? He was downstairs uh, at the pool while all of us were upstairs. He was He had a shirt, shorts, Yeah, he was Bro, I'm white. 2.0. He went on the beach with socks. Bro, the black socks too. Oh, I didn't even get a chance to mention it. The funniest part. I Je- the beach with socks. Jeremy, no, but black. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, so do I. What funniest the part. It's funniest sand. part. Fireworks about to come on probably like 30 minutes, right? It's in about 30 minutes the fireworks are going to go off. Now, Big Rob has absolutely everything at this condo. Everything you can think of, oh, he fucking has it, right? <laughs> we're looking at the tugboat, we're seeing it in the ocean, we're like, we're hoping the tugboat stays right there. I come to remember, oh shit, Big Rob has binoculars. Yo, these are high grade We binoculars. go get the binoculars, sure enough, we're looking, oh yeah, the tugboat has fucking fireworks on it, so it's obvious. What does EJ and fucking Jake start looking at? They start looking at a bunch of girls that are doing Instagram photos down at the beach. Bro, I had it so zoomed yo, in. EJ we, calls we Jake out zoomed. because Jake's not looking at the tugboats and he's like this straight down. He's just like, yo, Jake, the tugboat's over there. What the fuck are you looking at? But here's the thing. Here's the thing. After, after I caught him staring at the girls, I took the binoculars and looked exactly Dude, I'm like looking. EJ. I'm like EJ. Look, I have it zoomed in perfectly. I'm like, just stand right here and look. And it worked out. Dude, it was funny. Bro, here's the thing. The focus was perfect. The lens was perfect. The zoom was perfect. Everything. Like I saw just them stand right people. here and point. Bro, I saw them like they were right next that to me, That shit was so hilarious. And, oh, by the way, I had to apologize because, remember, we were up there on the, on the, at the penthouse. Uh-huh. And we had put out beach chairs early in the day, and we just left them there with towels and shit on, just in case we wanted to go back down. No one's going to take them. No big deal. Later on that day, I saw people sitting in our chairs. <laughs> and I had told Jake, and I was like, yo, that's fucking crazy. They're sitting in our shit. Not realizing 
That it was Dookie Dave and his fucking wife. Oh my god, that's <laughs> I hilarious. Found out later on that night. That's hilarious. That's hilarious yeah, dude. here's the thing, but I forgot. I told Dookie Dave and his wife where our beach chairs were. I'm like, oh, if you want to use them, go ahead. They're downstairs. There's plenty. You know, you <laughs> and have. And I'm sitting room. 17 stories high, like. Look what? at these motherfuckers sitting up and shit. I didn't realize it was them. That's I, funny. I didn't realize it wasn't until it wasn't until Dookie came to make the steaks. And that was cool because he, he he sent me a very heartwarming message about how everybody was nice to his family and he appreciates it or whatever. I love his wife and his daughter. But listen, EJ cooked the hamburgers and Dookie Dave made the steaks. And and when I knew when I knew Dookie was gonna be there, I told Joe, I was like, yo, listen, doesn't matter if you double book Dookie. People's, he's cool. Everything's gonna work out, and it did. Like, he was making dip. He did a fucking spread. He the brought broccoli, bro. Like, bro. trees, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. For you, oh, come beat it. The yellow watermelon was good. It was good. It was the yellow good. watermelon tasted better than the red one. It was good. It was I ain't never eat so many vegetables in one sitting in my entire Dude, life. As soon as he got there, this motherfucker, cucumber. <laughs> He, but had that shit split peppers, up. Peppers, peppers, broccoli. Peppers, broccoli, everything. I made a video of it. I'm like, look, this motherfucker been here for five minutes. He's already making a goddamn split. His wife started getting mad at him like, why are you cooking? Why are you, why are you cooking? <laughs> We're on vacation. I, I, think, I think it had a little bit to do with her being able to sit there and say that she wanted to relax with them or whatever it may be. But It was nice having them yeah, over. Yeah, we were definitely, they, they're cool people. It was really nice to have them over. And it, it, it's just more about hospitality. It's being able to entertain more than anything else, you know? But the place was dope. I mean, Big Rob, whenever he goes back out of town, by all means, I'll take it up again. And uh, we had a good time. It was cool. Oh, yeah. Well, guys, that's going to conclude today's episode. Make sure you click like, subscribe on all podcast platforms, on Rumble and on YouTube. Once again, the show is sponsored by Katie Power Greens, our urban farm microgreens company that I own with my kids. The episode is powered by Ignite Social. <laughs> and make sure you get all of your EC Respect merch at inasiacolon.com, E N A S I A. C O L O N dot com. As you can see, also Avion, if you want to sponsor us by all means, feel, please feel free to do that and we'll check you out next episode. Appreciate you guys. That was great.